Good morning and welcome back. We are learning a lot of shocking new details about the tumultuous last few years inside the Port of Seattle this morning. It's all coming to light as part of an exclusive investigation on the front page of today's Puget Sound Business Journal, TED Talks, the rise and fall of Ted Fick, the Port of Seattle's first private sector CEO. The Puget Sound Business Journal is our news partner. Andrew McIntosh is the reporter behind this remarkable investigation. We read this with great interest. It's a lot to unpack, so if you wouldn't mind starting with just a couple of the highlights, things that even made maybe your jaw drop as you were writing this story. Sure, I think the big takeaway is that for the last year and a bit, Mr. Fick and the members of the elected uh, Port Commission have been at loggerheads fighting with each other over three different issues involving Mr. Fick. And the first one was uh, this payout plan. You remember there was $4.7 million in taxpayers' money handed out to 642 Port employees uh, under circumstances which the state auditor now says were unconstitutional and unlawful. And so we've got some people have returned that money, $180,000 has been returned so far. But uh, Mr. Fick seems to have improved his own payout as part of this package and the commission was furious. They didn't think that he should be getting and giving himself a payout. So that's the first thing. The second thing is you'll recall Mr. Fick was uh, arrested for driving under the influence. And what but it seems happened inside is that, again, there was controversy over that, not because of his, his arrest, uh, because they don't think he had a drinking problem or anything like that, but because he actually wanted to go away on holidays afterwards without making any public announcement. And as one commissioner uh, said in the report that we got a hold of, Ted needs to understand that running a public agency when you're the CEO is like living in a fishbowl. So he finally relented and did uh, disclose his arrest. And the third thing was he wanted to join the board of a private trucking company in New Jersey. His contract with the port allowed him to do that on condition the commissioners approved it. Now, what bugged the commissioners is they asked him, so how much are you going to get paid for this? He said, $25,000 in board fees. And then it only emerged later when they re-interviewed and questioned him about this and what the company was that he was actually getting an equity stake, you know, worth what he said at the time was a quarter million dollars in this trucking company operation, uh, when in fact uh, he hadn't said that the first time. So, uh, and it's been touchy for the commission to uh, have their CEO taking outside boards before, so it caused a lot of conflict. And th this, this conflict between Mr. Fick and the commissioners lasted months. You know, this is really the first time we're hearing from Fick at length on record. He, you really got him talking when it comes to this particular report. What were you surprised to hear from his perspective? And what was his response to this? Well, Mr. Fick, I think, said what a lot of people are, are saying in the, in the business community right now, which is that he he felt he was being scapegoated for this controversy over the uh, special payout program. Uh, he said, you know, the idea for it came from the commissioners and he and his people looked into it and they thought it would be okay and the commissioners were the ones who voted and approved the payouts uh, and so he feels like he's been scapegoated and part of the reason why that is is because he's delivered actually outstanding uh, results uh, on many fronts while he was the CEO of the, of the commission. He delivered a uh, record financial performance. He negotiated a huge business deal with Norwegian Cruise Lines to uh, overhaul a terminal down at the waterfront. Uh, he uh, fixed the problems with the uh, TSA back uh, back lines at the at the airport. There was a number of things that he did really well, as we lay out on the paper today, uh, that uh, he got a lot of praise for. In fact, he got a, a, a 3.8, I think, out of five on his uh, performance review last year, which was one you know one notch short of exemplary. But on the other side, there was Ted, who didn't really understand how to get along with the commissioners. Uh, his communications weren't uh, as good as they ought to have been with uh, elected officials. And as a private sector CEO, he might not have understood the, how important it is to communicate with those uh, public officials. So what, I mean, what can we learn as taxpayers now reading all of this behind the scenes and how tumultuous it really was? What's next for the port? And what do we as taxpayers really need to watch here as the port moves forward? Well, what ne what's next for the port is they need to hire a new CEO because Fick, uh, you know, as we know, resigned and he just 
basically uh, walked out. He'd had enough. It was a mess. Uh, he, he felt he was not being treated fairly. They wanted him to go anyways, so they need to hire a new leader. And uh, one of the things that Fick did really well inside the port was to uh, build a pipeline of new executive talent. And as it turns out, one of the people he plucked from the lower ranks of the port and put him into the chief operating officer role, uh, a 30-year port vet veteran, Dave Soike, uh, is going to be, uh, you know, considered a very strong candidate internally and may end up getting the job as the CEO. So that's a big issue going forward for the port uh, over the next few months. And as taxpayers, uh, what, what we all need to watch is how are they handling this? Are they picking the right kind of person? Does this person have any public sector experience and maybe p private sector experience? Because we need to remember the port is a hugely important institution in this city. It uh, has over $600 million in revenues and 2,000 employees and is a huge uh, engine in our, our, our regional economy. And the article, the report itself, does a wonderful job of yeah. really breaking through each of those layers that you've been talking about today. Andrew, thank you so much for joining us. Well, it was my pleasure. We really appreciate it. You can catch that article on the cover of the Puget Sound Business Journal today. Please read it. It's an interesting and important read, no matter what your opinion is on this topic, especially when it comes to, as you mentioned, hiring people from the private sector versus the public sector, the positives and negatives of that, something we're all talking about.